Hey everybody, you're listening to another exciting adventure in the world of podcasting. This is Words, Images, and Worlds. I'm Jason Dehart, and on this episode, I am pleased to be talking with comics creator James Anderson. James, welcome. Welcome, welcome. There Thank you. you are. Yeah, yeah. Now, you had a special requ- request, which was that at some point in the video we shift and people are like, what is happening? I just recorded an intro video. I'm a high school English teacher when I'm not podcasting. Um, and so there's a point at the video where I intro myself and I shift to like a bat signal and I'm in a like a Star Wars t-shirt and I'm talking about fandom and then I shift back. So I think we, we can totally do that. We can just play with it. And um, I hope you like what we put together at the end. I'm sure it'll be great. All right. All right. Uh, we should work out a signal for the shift. Okay. Um, if you need me to change clothing or anything, I'll do that. I mean, it's it's up to you. You are the guest. So that, that works totally well. I am admiring the portrait in the background. Oh, the chihuahua. Uh, and... My wife painted that. Ah. Um, and that those are our dogs, Tulip and Pogo. Uh, Tulip is not actually a chihuahua. She's a husky and boxer mix, but I oh, tell her wow. she's a giant chihuahua. Yeah. Because, but she because she kind of looks like that. And Pogo, he's just a some kind of hound that we don't know what he is. But he was named after Pogo Possum from the Pogo comic strip. Love it. Love it. I'm I'm gathering there's a comic strip sort of history for you. I usually start with the historical literacy question yeah. of where did you come from as a reader and why comics and, and things of that nature? Um, as a kid, I read newspaper comics. I never really cl- collected like comic books or anything. Um, so Peanuts, uh, which is most everybody's thing, it seems. And um, I have a, I wish I had it, but my grandmother used to cut out um, uh, uh, um yeah family circus uh comics mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh she would draw cross off billy and write jimmy in mm. it and then uh draw glasses on the mom because my mom wore glasses so uh i i'm not a particular fan of family circus but it does kind of hold a, a spot in my heart just because of that um in High school, um, I discovered Bloom County, mm-hmm. which I decided at that point I wanted to be Burt Brevet. And that's kind of where that started. After that, um, you know, it was just I just started looking up things, uh, old uh, Popeye comics, the original Seeger ones. Um, mm-hmm. I really love Crazy Cat, um, just the design aspect of it, not, but also the the use of language and um yeah i don't know just and then everything else has just been like a little bit of things from here and there um you know i draw certain things a certain way because you know somebody else did and i liked it so you know hands look like this because of this and you know whichever Love it. I love it. Do you have particular this is the influences question that was not technically on the list but just thinking about like particular ways that you draw things. Is there a, an artistic lineage that's there? Um, I, well, there's some Calvin and Hobbes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the really thick lines and the, the brush, the, just the way he used the brush, but I work digitally, so it's not quite the same. Um, just the, the fluidity of style that, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Seuss, uh artwork had i just like that style um and uh i don't know there's there, there's a lot of little things that kind of came from different things but i'll i still see things today that i'm just like i really like how they did that uh-huh. and just kind of tuck that away uh it may not directly influence something but maybe it will indirectly do that you know influence love that love that I, we're a few minutes in and I haven't mentioned the title, which is Ellie on Planet X. That's the the work that you are known for yeah. that is out in the world that is. 
And I don't even have a copy of it right here that I go, oh, wait, I do. There it is in the print form. Love it. I, I like also the kind of like um, side panel edition, how, whatever you would call that layout, kind of a um, pastoral landscape. That's the word. That's okay. the word. Yeah. I like that landscape format because it captures like a lot of that Calvin and Hobbes, you know, far side kind of like print concept that comics would appear in. Yeah, I think that it comes directly from comic strip art or comic strip collections. Um, and just the way that because I was doing strips uh -huh. and not long, uh, longer stories. Um, it was easier to just fit two strips on a page or a Sunday size strip on a page. So I was doing it in that way, as opposed to, um, you, you know, like thinking outside the box and doing something where like, if you go on, um, uh, any of the like comics aggregator sites where, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like a constant stream of panels going down and they can make it however long they want uh, I just you know never occurred to me to do that I always kind of worked in the tradition of doing a comic strip a newspaper comic strip but you know you don't you don't have to do that um, but yeah that's just what I was doing and there it is yeah yeah and you also you created in kind of the web comic format um before yeah. print so curious about what led you to that world I, I didn't know as much about web comics until probably um i want to say seven years ago or something like that i sort of had heard about web comics a little bit and then started to to get into them a little bit more so just curious about what turned that on for you as an avenue i think it was just because there was no you know I didn't have to ask anybody's permission to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I had tried to get comic strips syndicated through newspapers, which, you know, today it's kind of a pointless venture. I still know people who, who do it mm -hmm. and they do really well. Um, but for me, it was just like, I don't know, the subject matter that I was doing uh, and the ideas that I had, it just, wasn't something that anybody was looking for and so i just thought I'll, I'll do it i'll do it online and um i discovered uh you know other people who were doing it and asked questions and got advice and just kind of did it that way but i was still doing it in the format of a, a newspaper comic strip which i think a lot of people were because that's just what they knew mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah has has your formatting has your approach changed to it since you started um, well, I don't do Ellie as a comic strip anymore. I've been trying to do a pitch for a graphic novel, mm -hmm. but so far that's been kind of, I get to a certain point and then I kind of get the, my legs kicked out from under me and kind of have to go back and rethink how I'm doing things and, and stuff. So that's more in like a traditional graphic novel side size you know just like the books like this yeah, um yeah. and then i have another comic that i've been working on called mcfluff and that's been i've been doing that basically as like a graphic novel with the idea that it would be published as a, a book that was like a graphic novel size that's a lovely mcfluff oh thanks nice. um lately because i'm i have one uh, collection done for the Ellie on Planet X comics, that the online comics, and I'm putting together a, a second one. Uh, and what I had originally done was taken like about half of what half of the comic strips that I had done, or you know, like gone through all the comics, cut it in half, kind of look for a, a spot that was a good uh, cliffhanger, mm -hmm. and then that would be the that from that point on that would be the second book. But in looking at it it's sort of like there's a lot more stuff in the first book than there was in the second book. So I'm kind of going back and adding some things and doing some original stuff that hasn't been posted online. And one of the things 
one of the stories I'm doing is kind of like being told from the point of view of like what Ellie would put in her diary. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. If she's if she's keeping field notes, this is kind of what that is. But um, you know, in no way serious or or anything. Nice, nice. Oh. And um, I also appreciate the the accessibility, sort of the all ages aspect of Ellie, um, because web comics can go in a, in a lot of different directions. So I appreciate that part of it as well as somebody that works with uh, kids at a variety of ages. It's it's kind of a nice thing. Thanks. Yeah, it's not planned. It's just what I do. Right? <laughs> Is that also the approach you want to take with the graphic novel that you have in mind? Yeah, although uh, some of the, I don't want to say problems, some of the things that I've learned is that, uh, and I had originally thought of this as being like a middle grade graphic novel, Mm -hmm. um, but apparently publishers aren't interested in middle grade books that feature talking animals which i essentially Ah. that's what my story is yeah those tend to skew a little younger so i'm rethinking this and how i might do this again because i i'm kind of at that point where it's like i i got to a certain point and it was kind of like this is great Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's not really what we want. So I'm kind of rethinking about how I'm going to do this or if I'm going to do this. I mean, I feel strongly enough about the the characters and the subject and and, and the story um, that I want to translate it into something. But if I can do it in such a way that maybe a bigger uh, audience would be able to see it as opposed to how I was doing web comics, because arguably my my audience was pretty narrow um and and i'm not particularly good at marketing myself so it, it was um yeah if i could do it in such a way that like a publishing company could help me with that that would probably be better yeah yeah there, there's the whole industry side of it and audience and it's funny that you mentioned talking animals not being middle grades because i feel like i've seen that recently and I feel like it worked well in at least a couple of books that I've seen out there. So um, and definitely. It, and there are probably a lot of, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's probably a lot of books that are like that, but they're probably rarer than, you know, the uh, gotcha. what I got was that. Uh, by th- that age, uh, kids are more interested in seeing other kids. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, where I guess they would imagine themselves in the story as opposed to, you know, a, a, a talking animal or something. I was looking at it from like my inspiration, actually, from doing uh, for doing a graphic novel, like a middle grade graphic novel was looking at um, animated films Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you see a lot of talking animals and animated films, and those aren't, you know, especially like the Pixar ones or mm-hmm. like I just I just watched the last um, uh, 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 Puss in Boots movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the other day, which I loved. I thought it was fantastic. And I don't think it's a story that's necessarily geared toward really a uh, really young audience. Yeah. Uh, so I tended to think that this was the kind of story that I wanted to write. Um, but you know, I, I can, I guess, simplify it, you know, as opposed to having, you know, it be more complex, but still kind of tell the same story. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, have you read, um, save it for later by Nate Powell? Um, no, that's a, it's an interesting one because I write that one. Yeah. Uh, it's for adults really or young adults at least and it's it's very social and political and thoughtful um and so what he does in that book is he represents himself it's like autobiographical so he yeah. will be like um you know realistic or whatever but then his kids that are also play a role in the book he imagines them as these sort of talking animals um 
which I, I guess in it, you know, you can kind of dive into and go, oh, it's like representing the innocence and representing the way the kids see themselves or the way the outside world views them or something like that. So it's just it's kind of fun how people play with some of those ideas. Yeah, I'll, I will definitely look for that because, yeah, I'm I'm looking for some. I, I'm, you know, I've got a lot of graphic novels, but I'm looking for stuff that might help me try to figure out how I'm going to redo this. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. Well, I'm, I'm sending all the good vibes. I'm putting it out there in the universe. That's right. There they are. You see them. Um, that's right. We we can do some special effects right there if Ooh, you want. OK. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> um, no, I want to see that. Oh, absolutely. It's it's guaranteed. Um, we can also do the jump cut whenever you would like. Okay. All right. You can um, do it right there. I don't perf. That's great. That'll work. Um, <laughs> uh, so I think the last item on the list, and we can talk about anything that we might have looked over, but uh, of course want to share with people the place where they can get the print copy where they can check out what you're doing hear about next creative endeavors um and all of those sort of things if you do author visits and and all the things uh, of such a nature okay um well the book is available on amazon.com and if you just search lam planet x it'll come up i also have another book which is uh the comic that I'm doing online, and I shouldn't say I'm doing it right now. It's in the middle of the beginning of the story. And then I kind of stopped because I was working on the graphic novel for Ellie. But for McFluff, I did a short story that's kind of like, I don't even want to call it a proof of concept. It was just like, I had this idea of this dog. I wanted to do a story. I didn't know what the story was about. I drew some pictures. It kind of became its own thing. I didn't know how it was going to end. And then when it did, I just put it together in a little book. And that's also available on amazon.com. So if you want to look for McFluff, it's M-A-C-F-L-U-F-F. And you can also find the uh, up and you can find the in progress graphic novel version of it at mcfluff.com and Ellie on Planet X is available at Ellie on Planet X.com. Um I hope most of the I don't update those sites too often. Most of the stuff I'll I do if I'm talking about uh either news of what i'm working on or um uh, uh just sketches or anything is usually i post on instagram or facebook i mm -hmm. don't post to what used to be twitter anymore i have no idea yeah. um, a, lot, a lot of xx is out there yeah yeah um, well i i've never really used it much anyway and um so you can find me at Ellie on Planet X on Instagram. And then I'm James Anderson on Facebook, but there's a gajillion of us. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So if you searched for Ellie on Planet X, you'd probably come across me on Facebook. Um, and yeah. Cool. So I, I don't post with any regularity. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm working i have like three different projects i'm working on right now between putting the book together uh the second the second ellie collection together um i would i would say drawing the mcfluff story but i haven't drawn anything in a while because i got to a point where i didn't like what i did so i'm going to redo it but i haven't done it yet because i was also working on the ellie graphic novel stuff which i need to go back and rework so i have these three things and none of them are getting done that's good uh but i do occasionally post some things on online so hopefully the 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 ellie collection will be available in the spring of next year 
Sounds wonderful. We'll, we'll look for it. And did we miss anything in the interview? Any words of wisdom? Uh, I don't know. Here's my words of wisdom. I don't know anything more than anybody else. <laughs> That's very wise. <laughs> yeah. So um, if, if it's, if, if you're somebody who is well into their artistic career, just keep going that's all I can tell you. Um, if you're young, uh, just do what you love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Love it. Love it. Well, well, we will end right there. And thank you, James, so much for taking the time oh, to talk with me. No problem. It was my pleasure. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime.